Hello again, and this is the uh, second video in a, in a series I'm putting together. I was hope, hoping to get one of these videos out once a week for the progress on my on the program that I'm working on here, just to give I, just give people some uh, some uh, progress updates once a week on the development in that, and it's been developing actually quite quite good. <laughs> that's all I got to say. So um, yeah, let's take a look at some of the uh, stuff that's been going on. So uh, so so far, uh, as you can see, I'm in, I'm in a VM this time. Rather, like roll a container actually, so that it's uh, so that you don't have the the top part annoying. Um, but yeah, so this, so currently I have a I, I made a, I made a new directory structure. So this is how it'll be actually on Windows and on Linux and Unixes. It'll probably use the home directory on Windows. It'll probably it'll most likely either use the current directory depending if it's unzipped, or if it's installed, it'll most likely just go to your document settings and things like that and have like a a directory there for it, right? Um, but so far, here's what we have so far. We have we have a docs directory which has various documents, cards, I'll get into in a second. Uh, scenarios, get into it. This is the newest feature I was actually mentioning in the last video that I was going to try and work out. It was a scenario runner. And this is actually going to be quite exciting. So I'm very excited to so show the scenario runner to you guys. Uh, sources is should be obvious. Source files. <laughs> and the C library, which the C, that's what we also, this is what I, last time I showed you the, the config and then the lib files are all located here. So, um, but yeah, let's start the simulation and and uh, show you how the scenario runner works. So this is gonna be exciting. So here we go. Now all of these options finally work. So we're gonna go to the first option in this video. We'll go to the other options in other videos. But first, uh, in the first video I went to this option. But this time, let's go for a scenario, shall we? New scenario. Right now we only have the one demo scenario. I'll, I'll explain what an SMC is in a bit. But let's go to this. Let's go to the demo. And as you can see, it opened up the uh, program as before. There's a bunch of different bunch of changes in the program too. So here we have the actual scenario runner itself that that just kind of hovers around. So we're going to enlarge this. I'm going to there's going to be a better default size later on for it, but let's enlarge it that way so we can actually see it. And then uh, let's go through a few options quickly before I jump into the actual uh, into the actual meat and potatoes of the of it all. So in the help, under the help menu, we have an about finally, right? <laughs> and then you also have the 82 assembly help, which is nice. Look at this. You have full, you have full in help for everything. So addressing, for example, and we'll add both the various addressing. Click on addressing and look at that. You have full access to the whole addressing thing. So you can see all the addressing information like that. And then the other one here, we also have a basic. If it if it is ended up being included, you can actually see the basic help. So you want to see on how to uh, let's see where the language reference, for example. Takes a second, but then here we go. We now have the language reference. We want to know. We want to know how um, the let's see the the null command works. It didn't. Did it go to the right place? It probably did, didn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It should have. I think it did. It must have. Uh, I don't know. Was null in that area? <laughs> I didn't actually try to click half of those sometimes. I think I think null was in that area though. I think yeah, null. It's right there. So yeah, it did go to the right place. Anyways, uh, besides that, uh, but yeah, let's. Uh, the, right now you can tell that these are unhighlighted because in scenario mode these aren't available, and the scenario can optionally enable these. Even code editor is not enabled. If you go here, code editor, you can't do anything. Everything's disabled because it's in a, it's in scenario mode. But let's uh, let's see what the scenario says. Now let's see. The scenario says this is this. This scenario will demo this program. This scenario program can do all sorts of stuff. Basic demo routine. A scenario program can also load basic, which it just did, as you noticed. Uh, neat. Now let's start the CPU. And as you can see here, we have a monitor form, which we don't need for this mode because this is real, real in real time. That doesn't really work very well, so we're just going to close that for now. And I'll get into that later. So we'll look at the scenario updated. When asked, cold boot. So it gives the user an idea on, what they, on how to process, on how to do things, right? To teach them how to use this, for example. This is basically a demo of the application. And what's memory size, you think? Oh, look at that, memory size. And it even switched the memory over to this where you can actually kind of see how things work. And then, yeah, so memory size, it says, should be 2,000 hex. Hit enter. And then we just have to wait a little bit. It'll take a while to load. You can also, also add down here at the bottom, you'll also see I added all these nice little fun counters, all the, re the, all the, all the registers, along with the program counter, can be easily visible now. And on slower speeds, which if you can access the speed menu later on, you can see that it'll actually be easier to monitor and do stuff. This is quite exciting now. Oh, look at that. So after it loaded it, um, so yeah, I, I just loaded this binary program into memory, and it went to the binary program. Oh, look at that. Just run this program. This, this is kind of a callback from the first video I made now, isn't it? Except this is all the scenario doing it instead of me. <laughs> so let's go call 2000. Hit that, and it should run the routine in 2000 here, which it just did. And look at that. 
and now it's gonna now we're, now it's gonna introduce you to loading files in basic. This is now po this is now possible. So last time when we ran the load command, this would have happened. It would have gave us a no CFFA one error, right? But now look at that. Now the, now this scenario just enabled the CFFA one compact flash virtual device into into memory. Now look what we can do. We can now hit the load command again, and watch what happens. It'll now ask us for a file name. And the file name to enter looks like it should be hello. So let's enter it in and see what happens. Look at that. It just loaded it in. <laughs> and now we just have to run it. And as we run it, it'll actually run the program that I wrote a bit I wrote a bit earlier for this uh, for this video. So and it runs the it calls the assembly routine, brings it back, and asks my name is. Enter that in. It's all pretty seamless, and I'll, and in the next video, I will go through how this scenario actually is written. So, and look at that. And now it's asking us to add a line. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Let's try adding this funky poke line. Of course, an inquisiting user at this point would actually try to list the program, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want to leave that a secret. <laughs> and here we go. So I added the poke command. And the scenario should automatically detect it in a few seconds. Yep, there it is. Great. Now run, now run the program again. So we can just do a run and watch what happens. Hey, look, it cleared the screen. Isn't that neat? <laughs> and with that, it'll end. And now it'll go on to the C demo. It'll load a C program and load the C runtime into memory. And now, now a C program is running. And then it even shows you where the heap is. So the heap is right here. So as I as I enter in a variable name here, it'll actually allocate memories in the mal these in the C malloc command to actually allocate memory on the heap and use it. So if I hit enter, you'll see my name up here, up there. Ta-da! <laughs> Isn't that cool? And then it Process it through and look at that. Oh, now it loaded up. Now it loaded a Pascal program into memory. This is all, I'll get into this in another video. But yeah, for all you can, this is it's, 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 this is a basic command interpreter that I created in Pascal. So we have a CLS command and a simple exit command, and then it's done. I don't think the hallway pick this mic is usually good at not picking up in the hallway. So <laughs> my my webcam doesn't do the same. It picks up everything. Anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's so that's the uh, that's the de that's the uh, the demo there of uh, of loading of lo have loading those programs quite at least quite easily into memory there, as you can see. Um, but yeah, so if you so if you and if you scroll through, the memory actually is all there. So you, it's all the same. Like it doesn't actually take anything out. So everything is like you can the user can still scroll through it all and explore it if they would if they if they want at to their leisure, right? And so. And if the user wanted to, well, actually, okay, here I'll I'll go into the other tool here. So, oh, I can't because it's it's, it's I can't. <laughs> the scenario editor doesn't allow that. But yeah, so let's go. Let's take a look at that SMC file because that's a really big crucial part of the, how the scenarios work here. So if we close this, and we go into the scenarios directory. You'll see this demo SMC file. It's a pretty big file. So if we open up this, we go into the we go into the advanced sandbox game, and then we can go to the editor here. And then if we change the code to scenario game, then we can go here, we can go card explorer. And you can see the card. So as you can see the card has four objects. So here's the main scenario program that uh, that's in the, I'll show you in a second, the code editor. This is that basic assembly program, which I can show as well. And another, and another C program here, hello, hello, the hello C program that I created. And it's also, and then the hello Pascal programs over here. 
So here is the scenario. Here's the actual scenario code here. This is a bin the binary file, of course, is the binary for this scenario, which I think I showed you the binary viewer in the last video, so it's not very uh, critical to go through this now because this, this is just the binary version of the scenario, right? But you see everything. You even see all the text that gets put out. This is basically a C program. <laughs> but yeah, so this is how this is how the scenario works. So it's a pretty big C file. It doesn't do it's not, it's not as complex as you might think. Actually, it's actually pretty simple. I tried to make this as in, as easy as possible for anybody that wants to try writing scenarios. Can it shouldn't be as long as you know your semicolons at the end. And it's also a fun introduction to just getting used to C programming in a, in, a, in a, just this in the scenario environment, right? And so, but yeah. So this is the main. They always int main is always called first if you're you know C, right? And then in, puts a few put they use the puts command to put a couple things to the user and then it runs basic demo then C demo then pass demo and then it ends it and it ends the code there so if you go up to the uh, basic demo you will see that it'll go to basic runtime it load it does load basic it sets the memory address to where it load to where it loaded into where it loads into memory and then after that it updates the memory viewer to show you that location plus it, it copy it makes sure the memory viewer is updated with the latest memory view and then after that it uh, it asks the ask the user to start the CPU, and then f after it does that, it double checks if there's a byte at 401, which means that you, that there's code in memory, and it lets the user know that uh, there might be code program because that'll this will cause bugs in the program because it doesn't there's certain things that might not work in the scenario if there's a program already there, so it expects it to be clean. In in most cases, it will be empty, but I just put that there as a, as a test, I guess, at the time, right? And then it changes the game speed to super to real time. So that it runs, so because the C interpreter is incredibly slow, <laughs> running at running at uh, running at other modes. So it's CSO, re real time. It has to it has to run as real time in order for it to be usable. And then we wait again for that. We wait again for here. This is actually checking. What this is actually doing is actually checking on the stack. So the stack inside of uh, inside uh, where is one there? The stacks. This is the end of the stack here, so it's actually checking for a JSR. So what it does, because when 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 you when it when the when the code does a JSR jump to jump to subroutine, what it ends up doing is it actually pushes the last known location of where you're gonna jump, where you're gonna run, where you're gonna go back to when you use RTS. When you hit the R, when you run the RTS op code, it'll actually pop the stack back into the back into the program uh, counter and then send the and then send the code back to where it came from. So that's what the stack that's what the stack is used for in this case. So what it does is as I end up just the scenario actually checks, it waits for the stack. It watches the stack to see when the stack changes to determine if it, if it's in the right per position in the code and once it is, it goes, "Oh, when asked, do a cold boot, right?" <laughs> Simple, and then as you keep going down through the scenario code, we have another wait here again. This is the wait to this is the wait for the JSR to determine when the user has to enter in the uh, the two thousand text command head size, right? So it gives that as so it gives that as well, and then after that it waits until it gets the ready prompt, till basic is finally ready to go, which is this, and then after that it loads in bass asm. The bass ASM file, which is that basic assembly file that loaded into 200. It, uh, the load address is, uh, is embedded in the load block. It's not based on this. It's actually embedded inside the block itself. So when you actually import stuff, so when you do import, so if I go here, Card Explorer, go into here, you right click, you go import block. When I import a program, it'll actually determine, it'll actually set set it up correctly so that it knows the load the load location automatically. So it, it takes it takes care of some of the, a lot of the stuff for the for the end user, right? Like that, and then after that, it sets the memory address, and then updates it to show the user that I just loaded a binary program into memory, and then it then it t tells the user to try calling this, and then what it then what it, what this program does is kind of is kind of cool. So what I'll, I'll show you the basic program in a second. What it's doing here is it's waiting three thousand ff. Three thousand ff is a is is I guess you'd call a flag. You would call it to to flag the scenario to do something. So what I so what I do is if we go down we go code we go to game code here we go to the bass asm s here at the very end of bass asm we have an lda ff and we set it to three thousand hex before before we do the rts sig signaling to the uh, signaling to the scenario that, hey, we're done, right? So let's go back to the scenario code again. So go back to the scenario code here. Uh, so after we signal, I should actually have it go back to the proper location when I click, but that's, this is still, this product is still in heavy development. So, you know, 
<laughs> but yeah, so it waits for it waits exactly for what I do in the in the assembly code, right? Cool, huh? <laughs> That's how you can actually set signals. If you actually want to create your own scenarios with your own programs, you can fully create scenarios that are interactive and as a teaching aids and things like that, right? So so it waits for three thousand. And then after that, it goes amazing. You're rally quickly. Then then it does the CF. Then it goes into CFFA one demo. This is that. This is the compact flash driver that I wrote recently. So when it does here, is it low? It's as it does loading files from Basic. Then it sets up the memory card to ensure that a memory card is set up. I'll show you that in a moment. And then after that, it does a puts and it uh, asks the user to run load. And then it waits. This is a different one. I had to I had to actually modify the basic source code for this to work. I was trying was getting super frustrated trying to figure out how can I tell if the user is in the CFFA part and it's, and if CFFA failed or not, right? To have the detect if CFFA failed so that I can have it properly react, right? So what I ended up doing is I actually ended up having in the in the code FF is I manually did an STA in the in the code to FF90 so that it gets set, so that it gets set if CFFA is not set to CF and then it, it waits for that and then once it's there then it then it actually runs the load CF CFFA which is actually part of I'll go to the, I'll go to the scenario H in a second and show you guys what scenario H is but then it loads the CFFA one and then after that it asks the user to type in load again and then once it loads it's fine and then it wait then after it tells the user to enter the enter the word enter the file name is hello and then it waits for 401 to show up 401 is where the program is where the the program loads into the address where it loads into so it waits until the program is loaded and then it proceeds and then it says oh it looks like the program is loaded and then it and it brings in the memory address and shows the user where the code where the code loaded into and then it tries then it asks the user to hit the run and then it waits again for for the for the uh for the ff for ff ff90 which i will actually go into the, go in there in a second probably in a future video and show you how these are set up these are also set up from basic as well. You can probably imagine how I'm, how I'm doing that by now. And then it sets, then after it, after it waits for this byte to be set, it sets it back to, it sets it to zero in preparation for the next section. So after, after our CFFA demo is done, it says a few words, blah, 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 then it asks the user to enter the poke. And then what it does is it waits for in the source code area for byte, byte hex 11. If byte hex 11 is then in the code, then it realizes like, oh, the user entered in three poke blah, blah blah exactly what I wanted right <laughs> after that that's entered in it goes great run again and then it waits for the for the run to, to for the run to complete and then it mentions that the screen was cleared and then after that the, the basic demo is finished after basic demo is finished it runs the C demo the C demo is probably more simpler because C demo doesn't do as much at all C demo is pretty fast and it, so it sets the memory address to show where the memory is going to be located loads the it loads that hello bin program from from the mem from the block that I from the memory that I just showed you and then it updates the memory viewer and then does a setup, sets sets up, which is because for this kind of program, for a C runtime program, setup is kind of needed. It does setting up vectors and resets the CPU, sets the vector, and then sets the IRQ and then resets the CPU for it boots up, correct, for it boots up into, C, into the C runtime. And then after it gets into this, after it's in the C runtime, because I, I, I'm thinking of adding a stop CPU command, but I don't know yet. I'll, I'm still working on the scenario, on the scenario runner's opcodes to determine what kind of opcodes are, are be useful. But right now I feel that this one is perfectly fine. So, and then after that we have another, we have, this is, and this is all in the C code here where I have a bunch of pokes. So we have a wait for 10 and then, then cha and change, changes the memory address to the heap location and then shows the user where the heap is stored and shows the variables being altered there. And then I, I was working on some other stuff here, doing some tests that I commented out for now. And then I have a wait for three for 30. And then after it passes by 30, it goes to the Pascal demo, which then sets the memory address to 800, load block, hello, P, hello load block, or the file name, hello PRG, and then updates the memory viewer and sets the vector RST and then loads that program and then it's off to the races, and that's the end of the day, and that's the end of the uh, scenario. So as you can, the, the, I didn't really do much of the Pascal one yet, but this is just, I would just, I just wanted to make this video as just a quick, uh, how the scenario runner actually works, and, and when the progress on that, and also the, uh, the explorers too, right? Because I have this now, you can actually import stuff. And there's also the other one too, so if I switch over to the game code, you can see the hello program here. So you can see this is a set flag, which has a poke, and there's a say hello, which does a bunch of other stuff, and it's pretty basic. And yeah, so I set flag to 20 or 10 based on this function call here that I have at the top, right? And then if you go into Card Explorer here, we can look at the demo card. 
which has the hello bass file. You can't we, in the, if right now these aren't these aren't interactable. These are just basically for you can delete, import, and you can't export it's not available yet either. But you can still access them and still view them and be able to work with them if you need to during during uh, development during development and that right, which is quite important. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think what else I have in here that I could probably show. I uh, oh yeah, so devices you can enable if you go into advanced mode like I just did, you can enable CFFA storage pretty easily. Memory has the same stuff as last time basically. Game same as last time and yeah, so everything I think is pretty much the same every, everywhere else. Besides the scenario runner is now there and working pretty well. So yeah. Not too sure what else I could bring up in here besides, well, I can show you the pat that pass that past the example Pascal code here. So if I open up the P65 program here, you can take a look and see the uh, the hello program here that I that not all not this this one's not running. The, this test that I excluded from this demo. So but it has an NMI, which I was gonna go through at some point, but I don't but right now I don't have right now the um, the scenario runner cannot do BRKs or NMIs. That has to be that has to be handled from the user currently, but that's going to be changed in a bit. Or also, I was going to demo that because those work as well too. So, so I'll demo those another time. The NMIs and here you can see the NMI being set to a pointer at high NMI and BRK pointer to high BRK. There's even a high basic here, which is part of a it's part of a table I created to actually be able to. One cool part I like about this compiler is when you compile it. Look at this. I this is this is so much more easier than any, than anything like the, the even the, the map and list file that you, that you can get generated from the C code doesn't help as much as this. It tells you exactly where everything is in memory, as well as ev like the bootloader, and then all the all your static variables are here, as well as a bunch of other uh, you know like look this is like just crazy, <laughs> right? You can see exactly which which functions, so you can go into your code and determine where everything is pretty easily. You can try, you can, you can easily troubleshoot by just looking at this output. This output is is paramount, <laughs> which is why I think I, I'm I'm enjoying the Pascal edit, the Pascal compiler a bit more than the C and assembler, <laughs> to be honest, at this point. <laughs> but you know, anyways, that's just that. Yeah. Anyways, um, that is that. I guess. Uh, I guess that's the demo. I can't think of anything else I'd want to add at this point. I got through everything pretty quickly, quicker than I expected. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I can eventually release a beta product out eventually, and definitely leave your comments and stuff, and what you what you think about it in the uh, in the comments of the video. Uh, so over the past little while, I have been getting some ideas on what other thing uses this, this can have besides educational stuff, because it can be used to do things like that, to create scenarios and teach you about how a CPU stack works and how the heap works and things like that. There's so many other things you could do with it. But as I was thinking the other day, over the weekend really, I was thinking about other really cool use cases that this could be used for. Because when you when I think about it, like this scenario, these the scenario file that I this scenario file that I just showed you here, this file is completely self-contained, right? It's fully self-contained. <laughs> Like this file can easily be copied to another to another cop another version another copy of the program and dumped into the scenarios folder and just launched. You don't need any of these sources. You don't need these bin files. You don't need anything from here to run the scenario. All you need is just this SMC file that then has the scenario the scenario program as I showed earlier, right? And so let's go back to that for one second. Just this just to go to where the, where it was again so card explorer so we have this so we have the scenario and then we have the actual binary programs as well so which i think are really which i think is really cool it is all contained inside that one file so i can so it's kind of it's kind of neat and you can probably get get guess where i got this idea from hint to be if you want to if you if you know where i got the idea from from this uh, put it in the comments below. <laughs> I'd like to hear from you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, um, that's the end of the video, I think. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, hopefully you have yourself a great day.